last example that I'm making a video on is find the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation of 1 plus 2i over n, the quantity squared, times 2 over n. Uh, before we move on, what I want you to do is, and this is going to be a very common AP exam question, they'll give you this limit and then ask you which function are you finding the area of between which endpoints. So pause the video and see if you can reverse engineer what the quote unquote original problem would have been. And, and what I mean by that is something like this. Uh, find the lower sum and, or upper sum for this function. So you're given a function and you're given two x values to stay within. For this problem, see if you can pause the video and looking at this, reverse engineer what the original function would have been and what the bounds of integration are. Hopefully you've had some time to think about that. And if you weren't able to do it, that's perfectly fine. Uh, this is again, something that comes with time and practice. And the more you look at the formulas, the better you get at it. So here we have uh, a sum and a limit. We're first going to concentrate on just the sum itself. Then we'll worry about the limit at the end. So you can sort of not, not write these, but you can ignore these for now for the sake of just um, well, talking about it. We're just going to evaluate what the summation is, and then we'll worry about what the limit does. So this is the same in all the expressions, so it's probably going to be our width. This is the same in all the expressions, so it's probably going to be our height. Now, at this stage, we can multiply this out and get uh, 1 plus 2 times 1 times 2i over n plus 2i over n, the quantity squared. Or you can take a common denominator first if you think that that makes life a little bit easier. So I took the common denominator because people will think that that's the harder approach. So I did that. You can keep it as a single fraction. Either way, you're going to have to take a common denominator at the end of the problem. So it's one of those things where you have to pay the piper at some point of time. Might as well just get it over with at the very beginning. So we can multiply this by n over n, and then our fraction becomes n plus 2i over n, the quantity squared, times 2 over n. That stays as it is. Now if we multiply this out by squaring it, we're going to get n squared plus 4 times ni, or in, plus 4i squared. So that goes right there, over, and then we have to square the n as well, n squared. 2 over n just comes along for the ride. At this stage, we recognize that the 2 is a constant with respect to i, so I can pull it out. I recognize that n squared is being multiplied by n. That's also a constant with respect to i, so I'm going to factor that out as well, or pull that out as well using the scalar multiple property. So once that's out, I'm just left with n squared plus 4i n plus 4i squared. What we can do at this stage is rewrite this as, I skipped a step in the middle, but I guess we can do it now. This would be the summation of n squared plus the summation of 4i n plus the summation of, oops, 4i squared, which is really the summation of n squared plus 4 times the summation for n times the summation of i plus 4 times the summation of i squared. So you can see that this is being broken, that's being broken using the sum property of uh, summations. And then I'm taking the 4 and the n out of the summation using the scalar multiple property. And then taking the 4 out using the scalar multiple property as well. So the summation of n squared, which is a constant, because it doesn't depend on i, from i equals 1 to n, i equals 1 to n, i equals 1 to n. So hopefully you remember that the, the sum of a constant from i equals 1 to n is just the constant times n, c times n. So n squared times n will give me n cubed. Here we have 4 times n times the summation of i. The summation of i can be given by n times n plus 1 over 2. 
and then the 4n is just tagging along. That's the coefficient here. And then finally, we have 4 times the summation of i squared. Summation of i squared is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. And then this 4 is the coefficient from here, just tagging along. Now, at this stage, we need common denominators, just like in the previous problem. So multiply this by 6 over 6, multiply this by 3 over 3, keep this as it is because it already has a denominator of 6. That will yield us this. Now if we write all of this as a single fraction, the numerator will be given by this expression. So pause the video, multiply all of it out, make sure that you do indeed get the same thing I have. And then the denominator of 6 can be glued on with this n cubed in the denominator. So all these sixes can get pulled out here, and then this stays the same as it is. Now you can combine like terms, clean that up, and get this expression in the numerator. And if you distribute the 2 into this expression, you get 52n cubed plus 48n squared plus 8n over 6n cubed. n is the number of subdivisions. This no longer depends on i, which was our counter or our index. So if our, the number of subdivisions is 5, we can plug in 5 here and get an approximation for the area. If the number of subdivisions is 100, we can plug in 100 here. So this approaches a, uh, the, the true area as long as the number of subdivisions or intervals blows up and goes off to infinity. So if we were to take the limit, and that's really why this limit is present the entire time, and it needs to be there. Some of you might say, well, why can I not just take the limit of this right away? It's because the area is not equal to this expression. The area is approximately equal to this expression, but it is equal to the limit of this expression. Uh, degrees are the same. Degree for numerator and denominator are both cubes. So if we do 52 divided by 6, that reduces down to 26 over 3, which is our area. Now, for the next couple of examples, I have the solutions written up already, but what I want you guys to do is work through these yourselves. So just like here, I've skipped some steps, some simple algebra or some uses of properties in the next couple of examples. So example 11, 12, and 13 have some stuff that's missing. What I want you to do is trace through these steps and see if you can fill in the missing steps or make sure that the steps are done correctly. This is also a common AP exam free response question. They'll give you a solution and then say, fill in the stuff that's missing. Uh, please, please, please make sure that you actually go through that and, and use uh, the three examples as an exercise to fill in the algebraic steps that might be missing, but also to convince yourself that, hey, this really does uh, follow from one step to the next. Hopefully this uh, series of videos helps a little bit more. And if you guys have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out. Have a nice day.